guys, Stella here. Welcome back to my studio. Uh, today is actually a pretty special video just by what I'm wearing, the traditional Chinese chi pao with polka dots. Yes, we all need a bit more polka dots in life and please excuse the ceiling fan. I just can't figure out the camera angle to get rid of it. All of that aside, today I'm actually going to share with you two techniques I use a lot in my painting processes. One is the Chinese watercolor technique, the other one is the Chinese calligraphy technique. Um, I do have to make it very clear though, I am not going to talk to you as though I'm an art historian because I am not, nor am I going to talk to you as an art critic because I feel like it just zaps away the fun of it. What I am going to do is talk to you from a first person point of view as an artist who actually paint in these techniques interwoven with traditional Western painting styles. Um, so yes, let's get it started. So I'm going to look down and watch myself paint as I explain the whole techniques to you. I always start with my favorite Japanese Chromatech watercolor pen. I ended up using, I think, just the black, the gray, which is what I'm doing now, and the light gray. I did not use the blue as you can see, or maybe I did, I don't remember. But that aside, the most important thing I would like to share with you is that when you paint, in Chinese watercolor, it is not about capturing the likeness of what you see. It is not about depicting the reality that all of our eyes can see to its finest, minutest details. Um, if you look at pen Asian art, not just Chinese now, but Japanese, Vietnamese, Thai, whatever, Korean, we don't really put too much stock in uh, the reality that we live in. What we end up doing is we will use a very strategic curves and strokes. We create a impression, a concept for you to stop, still your mind, take a look and say, huh, what am I seeing? Can I go deeper? And how do you go deeper? And this is the brilliance of a lot of Asian painters who actually paint the style. We actually create layers upon layers of subtleties. I'm not talking about layers of paint. We actually don't use that much paint. In fact, I personally use more water than paint, as you can see. Um, we actually create layers of means and subtleties. Like for instance, if you look at this tiny little leaf, I'm adding water now the water actually dissolves the paint and separate the paint into different pigments. You have the slight green, you have the gray, you have the black. That's the layer I'm talking about. And But I didn't finish it. What I ended up doing is I allowed the native space, the empty space, the paper to come through. The whiteness of it or the blackness, whatever you know, uh, the color of your paper is to come through. And that is the reason why if you look at any type of Asian paintings, there's a lot of empty spaces because we believe it is through the empty space a viewer is able to anchor himself or herself and go deep into the painting and see and feel what the artist wants the viewer to see and feel. So it's, it's a very exploratory and encompassing process for both the artist and the viewer alike. From here, I am actually adding what I call the accented brush strokes. This is very much utilizing Chinese calligraphy techniques now. So if you know nothing about Chinese calligraphy techniques, that's fine. It's all about the motion of the brushwork. How do you press down your, the tip of the nib of your brush, let the ink seep out, and how do you lift it? How do you turn it? How do you curve it? And through that, you see the progression of where the artist's mind goes. And because we use different um, consistency of water. Sometimes, as you can see, I use a finer nib with a lot of water, and sometimes I use a fatter nib, like this one, 
with less water. So what you end up seeing is that when the water dries on the watercolor paper, you literally see where did the water, trails of water, where did the water go? And why did it go there? So you start to see the mindscape, oh, mindscape of the artist. And so looking at a, uh, any paintings done in this type of calligraphy style, Chinese calligraphy style, it's, it's as much about trying to figure out the subject matter as you are literally observing the mind of the artist and the motion of how he or she painted this particular artwork. For those of you who are new to my channel, um, I'm actually Taiwanese American. I am born in the United States, but my family didn't want me to lose the side of the Chinese culture, so they sent me back to Taiwan for 10 years. In that 10 years, I went to public school in Taiwan, and it is actually part of their curriculum to teach Chinese calligraphy because Chinese calligraphy is actually considered an art form. It is not just writing. A writing system is actually art itself. It takes literally a lifetime to master. And because it is an art form, to me, I always get a kick that, oh my God, so practically when I write, I'm painting. When I paint, I'm still painting. Sorry, artist joke here. Probably not that funny to you guys, but to me, I always get a kick thinking about it. So again, so using the brush stroke, just adding hints, accents of an edge, of a shadow, but your mind can interpret that as such. You don't need to paint out the entirety, the realistic features of the flower to know, ooh, they are like one, two, three, four, five, five petals. You know, there's a tiny, there's a very elongated flower bud coming out, couple leaves. I don't need to show you every vine, you know. Oh, here it is, and every, um, uh, what do you call that? every stem for you for your brain to make that connection yourself and personally i think i i started painting like this maybe because it's part of my dna or i think it's also freer like i love just watch the water run and not knowing where it's gonna go half of the time I'm freaking out by myself here and then the other half of the time, I love doing the little crazy watercolor splash that you saw. So it's a very calming process. I feel like when I paint in a Western technique, I'm kind of being the teacher. I'm showing them all the techniques. I'm teaching them and telling them a complete anecdote of this particular subject matter I'm painting. And so all the viewer has to do is just stand there and just watch. And once the anecdote is done through colors, you know, composition, then the viewer walks away. Whereas in Chinese painting techniques, I feel like I'm kind of like this devious artist who creates a framework and structure of this anecdote story, but it is up to the viewer to go in and finish the story himself or herself. So just some food for thoughts, you know, both techniques are fabulous. They create completely different things, but it kind of makes you wonder, hmm. Now, of course, me being me, I had to add a bit of a glitter into it. Um, all the tools I'm using in this video Purchase links are down below in the description and feel free, they're not expensive at all, feel free and try them out, it's actually a lot of fun. So what the Chinese watercolor is trying to do is to capture a mood, a singular moment that the artist sees right in front of him, mostly him unfortunately, and her in modern time.
thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. And now I would like to end on a quote by Stanley Baker. And I quote, Calligraphy is sheer life experience through energy and emotion that is registered as traces on silk or paper with time and rhythm in shifting space as main ingredients. Unquote. Obviously, I could never talk, you know, like this. But I can paint, and I hope that with each painting that I do, it's a meditative journey that I can take on with you. All right, thank you so much. See you on my next video. Mwah.